What is up, YouTube? It's your girl, Evelyn, and today I am bringing you my top five underrated lesbian films. So sit back, enjoy the video, and as always, there will be mild spoilers, so proceed with caution. Thank you. Thank you. Mosquita y Mari is one of my favorite queer coming-of-age films. Although it's not as sexy as some of the other queer teen flicks, it beautifully captures the innocence of coming into your sexuality and the stirrings of first love. Yolanda is the good girl who gets good grades and generally makes good decisions, while Mari is the proverbial bad girl with a difficult home life who does what she has to to get by. The girls strike up a friendship that soon turns into something neither of them expected, or know how to deal with. This low-budget indie is truly a gem, and if you want to check it out for yourself, you can catch it on Tubi TV and Canopy. Come here. So in love with you, Elizabeth. Reaching for the Moon is a stunning lesbian period film that honestly doesn't get the respect it deserves. From its insanely gorgeous cinematography to the tumultuous love affair at its heart, Reaching for the Moon might be one of the most criminally underrated lesbian films of all time. The film is based on the real-life relationship between American poet Elizabeth Bishop and Brazilian architect Lota de Macedo, and is set in the politically charged Brazil of the 1950s. As we watch Elizabeth and Lota go from low-key enemies to straight-up lovers, it's impossible not to fall for them as they fall for each other. And as their relationship rages on for 15 years, we're granted a ringside seat to the good, the bad, and the straight-up ugly. This unapologetically romantic film is one of my all-time personal favorites, and you can stream it on Amazon Prime, Tubi TV, and Canopy. Hey, I was thinking about walking into town later. Get a real drink? You wanna come? Sure. <laughs> Don't sound too excited. No, it's just I didn't... I don't think that we're supposed to fraternize ever. Oh, right, is there a law against it? My Days of Mercy is a sweet romance that emerges from the conflicting politics of the death penalty. On one side of the aisle is Lucy, an anti-death penalty protester whose father happens to be on death row. On the other side is Mercy, the daughter of a conservative police officer who strongly believes in the death penalty. Part Romeo and Juliet, Part Dead Man Walking, My Days of Mercy is a strange blend of, well, romance and capital punishment. No doubt the film's heavy subject matter scares a lot of people away, but I promise the passionate affair between Mercy and Lucy is a perfect counterbalance to the film's occasional gloominess. Not to mention the chemistry between Kate Mara and Elliot Page is off the charts. My Days of Mercy is a beautiful film and deserves way more recognition. And if you want to check it out, it's currently streaming on Stars. They have no idea you're bisexual? They know, I know they know. Why is there only one bed? It's European. Also in the movie Beaches, these two best friends shared a bed and it was very inexpensive. Appropriate Behavior is a 2014 indie comedy about Shireen, a Brooklyn hipster whose life is kind of a mess. From grieving the breakup of a serious relationship and hiding her bisexuality from her parents, to being both homeless and jobless, Shireen is the bratty but extremely relatable millennial inside us all. And even though appropriate behavior is hilarious, what I love most about the film is how it depicts the ways we move on or don't move on after a relationship ends. Shireen's behavior becomes more cringy and difficult to watch as her relationship deteriorates, and that's perfectly okay. 
And I am all for any movie that preaches that it's okay to not be okay. And sometimes it takes a really long time to be okay again. If you're looking for some irreverent comedy with a little depth thrown in, you can catch appropriate behavior streaming on Tubi. You know how I feel. But I need you to say it. You know. No, I don't know. You know. And say it. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter what? It wouldn't matter about your color. Hands down, the best performance of Queen Latifah's career has to be 2015's Bessie, a biopic about legendary blues singer Bessie Smith. The movie follows Bessie's journey from small town girl to big time star and doesn't shy away from Bessie's bisexuality or her relationship with longtime girlfriend Lucille. And for anyone who thinks biopics are boring or dull, I promise Bessie is riveting. I mean, this film never lets up on the gas and its two hour runtime flies by. I can't recommend Bessie highly enough, and you can check it out on HBO Max. And for you history buffs, I also recommend the documentary Taint Nobody's Business, Queer Blues Divas in the 1920s. The 30 minute doc is a quick watch and highlights prominent queer singers like Bessie, Ethel Waters, and Ma Rainey. It's super fascinating and provides just a little more historical context. You can check it out on Canopy. That's it for the list, and if you want more recommendations, make sure to check out my weekly watch, where this week I review the season 2 opener of Batwoman, as well as the worst lesbian film I've ever watched, the saddest lesbian film I've ever watched, and a brand new lesbian web series on YouTube. And special shout out to my newest patron, Never a Straight Girl. You're simply as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>